Hi, y'all. It's Bridget Cudjall with Real Things Living. Today, my guest is a foreign Belisario. She is now a mentor, a teacher, and an author. She has an amazing background and spent most of her career in high tech. And she has a passion for writing, and that's why I wanted her on. Can you say hi, a foreign? Hi. All right. Good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, I just love having different perspectives, especially authors and what prompted them to, because you have a tech background, yet you've always had this love for writing, right? Since you were young is my understanding, right? Yeah. yeah and right. so what motivated you in general to like write this, this new book you've got called Silence Whispers? Okay. Well, a couple of things. Uh, uh, and as you pointed it out, I have had a passion for writing uh, since uh, since I remember, since I could uh, read and write. And I started writing in Iran before the revolution. I was very young. I was 14 when I started writing for you know major publishing houses in Iran of that time. But, you know, you come to the United States and then the revolution happened and I decided to stay in this country. I'm a dual person. I'm a Libra. I'm a real Libra. I can, I can always uh, argue against myself. So I was always very good at math. Math always came easily to me, which is sort of amazing for most people. Um, and also, you know, so, so that's, that's. But, and I always knew that it's very hard to make a living as a writer. And that for me was a, a very, very important right. aspect. So when it came to, uh, after I, you know, when it came to selecting a, a profession, so to speak, to make money, uh, I went for the math and the engineering and I really enjoyed that. You know, I'm, I'm, I like to think here. I like, I'm a very curious person. I. Uh, you know, I like to read about things and do things. And um, so I had a, a, a good, good uh, uh, starting point for, to be an engineer. And engineers can do anything. I mean, in my, this is my, yes. my, my unbiased, total unbiased opinion. Uh, but I came to the United States and uh, uh, one of the traditions in Iran, if you especially look at the, the contemporary um, literature in the past, 200 years, it's not really contemporary, but sort of modern literature, you see that people, a lot of people like me had a, a day job, so to speak. And then at night they would write and they would, some of them had really good books and some of them were famous as writers. Some used pen names, some used their own name, but this is a tradition. So I always had wanted to do that. But uh, for anybody who had li who had worked for corporate America and in high tech, uh, our lives is so busy. It's very hard to uh, to actually write anything uh, besides what is required it's for the goal. Right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But what we need all the thousands of emails that we have to write all the uh, you know uh, two hundred uh, uh, you know uh, slide decks that we make that kind of thing. But uh, and then, you know, I had a young family as well. So it was kind of uh, doubly hard to, to do anything. And, and I'm a sort of a, a, a type A person. I I don't have hobbies. I want to do whatever I do. I want to excel in it. I want to do well in it. I want to uh, pay my dues to it. So uh, I had a chance uh, a few years back. I, I was working for MIT and it was a chance that to uh, go instead of do, working full time, working uh, part time as a consultant, you know, there was a company who I worked for as a as a consultant on the retainer, and it was a great time uh, to give me a lot of flexibility to write the book. Uh, so I wrote the book, and that was part of it. So so that that's the that's the opportunity. So you know, when you when you watch crime novels, they say. Their, their motivation, their opportunity, their means, whatever. So this was the opportunity. Uh, but another motivation for me was always uh, to think, um, I was thinking about Iran. And you know, again, as a technologist who is always concerned about social issues, because I'm also a writer. I'm, uh, and as, as a writer, you are a um, student of human uh, psyche and human uh, societies. 
Um, and, uh, you know, then uh, I was always curious about what, there's, what, what are we doing with, with the technologies that we are advocating? And, and one of them is, for example, we have all my t- professional life, I've been on the bleeding edge of technology. We, we created this little box that all of us are addicted. Yes. Uh, find out that, that, oh, internet is the best thing ever. Uh, and for a lot of things that they're, they're very useful technologies and useful, but they are also uh, they're tools. Once you put them uh, in in the wide world, then people use them whatever they want, and they change society. And society um, sometimes, uh, you know, it has a chance to get back and and put laws in order. But one of the things that technology does for different societies is that. It, it creates uh, or it enables the, the changes in, in some people and some people uh, will stay uh, resilient to these changes. And changes are social changes. They don't have to be technology changes. You can still use the cell phone and um, not change your ideas. Don't use it to see how other people uh, might live and work. And, and again, as a as a member of Iranian diaspora, I was also uh, very curious about what happened in Iran uh, and why it happened and why is it that uh, we have such a fragmented society there? What, what happened uh, to to that? And so everything came together. I was thinking about all this, and um, as is uh, usual for me, I started you know researching. I started researching about the history. And then I came up to, uh, to, to, to look at the uh, early 20th century as the point where technology came to Iran, new ideas came to Iran, and some of the ideas were uh, the democracy. Iran was used to be a uh, absolute monarchy. There were democracy. There were um, rights of women, which was very, very controversial, and, uh, but there were people who uh, you know, uh, saluted that, including many women. Um, and so these all came together and, um, and, uh, and my heroine Gohar was born <laughs> from all this cauldron of different, uh, you know, so motivation was to, um, show or not to show, but, but to, to, to look at how people lived through these changes, you know, these em- enormous changes that came about to Iran. And uh, in my opinion, it started in early 20th century. Well, so I thought about what does it mean to be a person who be living in that area? And then I discovered that, uh, in fact, living through changes is what we are going through. So we're going through changes as well. And so I thought that that might resonate with, uh, with the modern readers. So I uh, so motivation and, uh, and everything and everything came together. Um, and the, the, the book was born. And it's called Silenced Whispers, everybody. Silenced Whispers. Yes, yeah, Silenced Whispers. And it's, it's historical fiction. Yes. Which, so I think that is my favorite. I think we need to uh, keep understanding history because we need to learn from it, right? Especially when we're Absolutely. changing. Absolutely. And I think that uh, when we do that, then we find that then it, it is really learning. I mean, it's not a cliche. We're really, you know, if you look at it, if you look at our time, this, the issues, they're not so different. Uh, yes, not so different. Uh, we have so here what many, and uh, so our, uh, um, we're not, we're not so different. So, uh, so it is, I love the, uh, the sort of fiction as well myself. So, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> so. I'm glad that I am uh, adding something to the treasure trove of uh, those historical pictures. Yeah, I always, one of my favorite books was about, um, it's called, Anne, well, Anne Frank is one of them, but the other one is called The Book Thief. You ever heard of that book? Oh, yes, of course. I think, that was, it's just, uh, I think they made a movie out of that, but he just learned a lot from the perspective. That's what I think we get out of this, the understanding different perspectives in your book the silence whispers is about a, a woman fighting for her freedom right yes 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 uh jen my my uh, uh the, the main character is a, uh, when when we first start the book she's 14 
And she doesn't do things by the book. She doesn't, uh, she's not very pliant. She, she, sure. she goes, uh, I mean, uh, she lives in a house, a uh, very traditional house, but she doesn't have any windows outside. So when yeah. she gets bored, she goes up the, uh, the roof and watches people passing by in the street. Um, there's no newspaper. There's no, uh, of course, television or anything like that. But she just sort of, she watches people and, uh, you know, that's not good. Uh, and she also does something else that is not good uh, as far as the social norm is concerned, which is playing music. Um, yeah. And uh, so she plays tars and, and music is forbidden, uh, at least, I, I mean, uh, in, in, uh, it's my understanding that it's forbidden in Islam, it's forbidden now in Iran. It wasn't for a while before the Islamic Republic, but especially music made by women or, I mean, um, singing, for example, a woman's voice is not supposed to be heard uh, by, by, uh, uh, by other men or whatever. So uh, it's, uh, she does all the bad things that she's not supposed to do. <laughs> right. And, well. I didn't know that music was not uh, legal. That is, every culture is different. And that's, again, another reason reading something like this would be really helpful to understand and some empathy. It helps have some empathy, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, my grandmother, uh, my, my great grandfather was Russian. So when my grandmother was growing up and he was obviously somebody who wanted to uh, have his um, daughters uh, educated and know everything. And so my grandmother um, was given tour lessons, which is also to high place tour. Uh, but when she married and her husband uh, was a young man, but her husband was in the military and was traveling um, and she had to live with her in-laws uh, and her mother-in-law was very restrict. Uh, so when my grandmother's mother passed away, she would go into a, a storage room and close the doors and she played a guitar because she played the music because sometimes when we are sad or we want to express that with music, sometimes when we are happy, we want to express that with music as well. Um, so that was a little bit of an inspiration to give Gohan a musical instrument. I love how you're you weaved in your personal family experience with this because that is a great way to share a story without saying too much, right? Sure. But you're having it connect with the, the reader. And it's, I just love that the woman that you're talking about makes me think of Anne Frank in a way. But yes. It, it really does. It's a book that made an impact on me when I was a young girl. I, I don't know when that book was, was or the di Anne Frank's Diary. I'm not sure when that was released. I wasn't a kid when I read it, but it just, I was, she gave me hope as a woman, right? Just yeah, like, of course. Yes. 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 Yeah. Wow. And we need the good, good role models and we need to have, you're very brave doing what, what you have done. I think it's, it's just amazing that you, I don't know, you just got a lot of tenacity too. Not just for say, <laughs> Yes, I'm to make sure there's nothing else. <laughs> I, I, I kind of see my myself a little bit in you, and my mom a little bit in you. My my mother is not from my mother married an American soldier, so yes. she, you know it's kind of. So I saw her and how she reacted coming here, and she yes. she was half Vietnamese and half French. Yes, and during Vietnam War, that was yes. not a good. It, you know, can you imagine? Um, yes, yes, I do. But my I mom do. was um. I saw her as a good role model, especially reflecting back on that, like you have done with your book. Yeah. You're like, wow, what these women had to do compared to what we're dealing with is so much harder, I think. Yes, exactly. I mean, uh, um, my uh, great, great grandfather from my father's side, he was, uh, he had 25 wives and concubines. And, and I always, that we have come a very long way. I have a PhD from MIT, so that's progress. That is some major a light speed progress. I think that is it's so uh, amazing what you've done. So when you came to the U.S., did you come by yourself? Yes, I came by myself. Uh, I, uh, you know, I already was had the 
all the documentations to go to school. I started at New York University um, School of Engineering in Brooklyn Politics. And, and then I transferred to MIT in Boston, uh, you know, uh, I'll meet you in the city. But yeah, I mean, by the time, by the end, uh, obviously Tehran was, um, at least part of it, was very westernized. So it, it wasn't, it wasn't so hard. much a cultural shock. But it, the, the, the thing was, and I think that I would share that with your mother, is that here, you can say whatever you want to say. You, you can say, um, uh, you know, and this politician is correct, or that politician <laughs> is not. And you can go all the way up to the, the highest level. We just saw that the uh, rule of law plus sure. everyone. Um, and that's good. That's refreshing. You know, I mean, some people might say maybe not good, but you know, it, it is refreshing to see that, uh, or better or worse, we have that, that, uh, freedom. And that was the big thing because in Iran, um, even when it was very Westernized, even in the sixties and seventies, when, you know, people could wear whatever they wanted to wear, you still could say a lot of things, you know, still there was this, uh, uh, this fear. Uh, everywhere. So uh, that was the most refreshing thing that I noticed when I came. Wow. I didn't, right. That's just like the culture just uh, everywhere is just, it's just changing constantly. And I think that's, I'm so glad you're using your voice. That is what we need is more women like you. And it also is an example, women are smart. They are. And I, and you're yes. definitely in a great example of that. And you're, you're embracing you being you. Yes. I, that's what we need to, to be, not to be in a box. I'm in a way, I was a little rebellious. I shouldn't say rebellious. I hated being put in a box for some yes. reason. And I didn't get a, um, I grew up in the, in the South with a, a woman who could, couldn't speak good English. <laughs> she taught, taught me English. But I would always, I learned from her to stand up for myself. Yes. Yeah. I got in trouble a couple of times because, um, just because I, I would not physically, I would just have, I was verbal. Yes. I mean, it's like, why not? Why can't I do this? And that's kind of because I, my mom, well, saw so much stuff too in, in Europe, even though she's French, but she still grew up in, um, you know, what was it? She was born in Vietnam, but my grandfather was in the. French army. And that's kind of how she met my grandmother, but it, it's just everywhere. So much has changed the last century, right? That we need to keep making sure we don't go backwards. Absolutely. 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 I, I, you know, that book like that tells you what the, what this does it mean to live in a society where it, the, the women are chatter when, when the girls you know, and uh, the girls are married at nine, you know, and uh, yeah, this is inhuman. Today, we would call that the man who, who has a sexual relationship with a nine-year-old pedophile. Yes. Child. It's a, you can't, you don't do that. Uh, but back in the days, uh, it was totally acceptable and it was normal, normal, which is normal, part of life. Yes. So well, amazing how... Uh how that has changed. I was very fortunate too. At the time I was man, I had an older brother who protected me. Right. Yes. But he knew I was a girl and I was just one of those, like, I was like, yeah, I'll do whatever. But he was always, I didn't realize my brother was doing that. And that's why I didn't have a lot of dates. I joke about it in high school because my brother was my, but he knew it was dangerous for me, yes. but I was a little bit more, I was more naive. Yes. Because my the father that raised me said I could do anything that I wanted. So I'm glad I had that kind of input. And it sounded like you did too in the same time frame. You, yes. were, you could be what you wanted to be, but at the same time, we need to be cognizant. And we don't want to uh, go backwards. And right. it's so important to learn about history. And that's probably why I like to read it a lot. Because you learn in how we need to to pivot, don't go backwards. <laughs> yes, I mean, freedom is not free. So yes. we, don't, you know, we got to not take nothing for granted. So I think that's an important lesson we have to learn and we have to know about. Oh yeah, it is not free. 
we're here because of all the hard work so many people have done, all these women like you and and, and in general, people fighting for our rights. Of course. Of course. It's uh it's just I don't know, my mother in law was a was part of the um I can't remember what it was called, the the women's rights movement. She was like on the board. I didn't know at the time. But I so I'm really lucky my mom and her to be great role models and not to succumb um to to speak up. And I've never been in danger like you have you know what I'm saying? I had not not that I'm aware of. That's what no. you take. We both have to be very um, cognizant of our surroundings. And then we all, uh, as women, even even as privileged as we might have been, uh, we still have, uh, you know, have, have to worry about a lot of things that maybe guys aren't. Uh, and oh, yeah. That, yeah. 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 So I don't know whether or not it will ever. I mean, I, I, uh, um, I I have two sons, and I the both of them are very respectful of women and women's rights and their own uh, partners and wives. Awesome. Uh, but not every young man is like that, and uh, and it's, it's that unfortunate. Yes, hands on their upbringing. And I have two sons as well, so I was meant to be a um, we we're meant to be moms and boys. Uh, <laughs> there are different. Oh, what was yeah, we- I was- Two lights and I don't want another boy. That was a lot of work. I mean, I love them, but I learned a lot. That I think I can make a wonderful people. But being a mom is important too. And I have a great relationship, you know, with my husband, who I joke that he, um, he's my protector too, right? I just, he, because he knows, and that's, you need uh, a man, like, uh, uh, you still need it. The, in these days, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, the, the, the big thing is that um, the relationship should be two free people. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not that they're lower or higher or powerful. You know, the relationship between a man and a woman has to be like in an equal footing, and yeah. that doesn't take anything away from a man. It, it just allows them also. To be human, to be vulnerable, to be, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there is a day when they don't have it all together. Uh, <laughs> and they can, they can rely on their spouses or partners or whatever. So it doesn't matter um, who is the, who is the strong shoulder at any given time. Uh, because, you know, men are human beings and they're, they, they are there are times that when they are very vulnerable and right, um, right, you know, and you know, as I said, so, it's, uh, so it works both ways, in my opinion. Yes, it. Um, I think my husband and I we get stayed together this long because we're kind of opposite. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. We're not. We use our skill, the right skill sets that we that we have towards the relationship, and we've got to be respectful and have compassion sure. for him and him compassion for me. And I was the, the mom that traveled a lot. I was one of those women who had to, he had to help with it. Yeah, so did I. So, I mean, the only thing was that between us, we, the arrangement was that we never traveled together for business. Correct. Uh, traveled together, there will be a family travel, which is exactly. That's but, but you know, but one one parent has to be has to be a real world. They have to be, especially when they're growing up. They need to a parent there, and it's I'm just really you know fortunate. I, like again, I joke he tolerates me <laughs> because I am independent. I just how I am. There's just nothing wrong with that. But I also respect people, and I I understood too in my work experience how working in a group. You can't do it alone. Even though I'm independent, you got to work together to sure. get something completed, right? I'm sure you have a lot of experience with that. You yeah, so I mean, I've been many, many situations. I've been the only one in the room. Oh, me too. Like, this is a different. I joked one of my jobs, and I was the first. I was like a product manager for the North America, and I was the only woman that wasn't a secretary. And but I mean. I guess because my boss saw that in me that I'm going to stand up for my, you know, speak up and be authentic. And 
you know, I was just very, again, reflecting, I was very fortunate to have some great people surrounding me, helping lift me up. And that's what we need to do to this other, I should say other, the new generation, right? And that's what you're kind of doing. You're kind of like helping them, right? You're mentoring them. And yes. they can learn from someone like you. I mean, you had a lot of diversity and I just love that you're, um, I think we're, we connect a little bit just because I'm like, I feel like, you know, I'm talking to myself, but I'm not in, in a high tech world, but I, I kind of was in a way, but it, it's just amazing. You just got to use your, your skill set, right. And your, and being compassionate. Sure. That is important. Sure. And a lot of times uh, when I deal with the, uh, with the, you know, when I mentor people and mentor teams or whatever, um, uh, I ask questions, you know, I don't, I don't, I mean, sometimes I talk about my own experiences sometimes, uh, but, but I let them answer the questions because, you know, it's a lived experience and it's what I want from people reading the book is, it's, it's get their own impressions, right? Uh, you know, uh, that's part of the beauty of writing fiction because you create a character that is gonna live, you know, it's what my reader takes away. It's their, their reader, their impression. Right, their, it's their perspective too, is part of it, how they're gonna interpret it, right? Sure. It's, sure. And, um, but that's, that's just amazing. I love what you're doing. And do you have other books? I don't know if you have any other. Uh, no, not not yet. But the 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 sequel to this one is coming out next year, and uh, yep. you know, hopefully, we we'll, we can we have a chance to talk about that. Yeah. Oh my God, this is awesome. I want to get a copy of that book because yeah, it's, 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 it's uh, if you like, I'd be more than honored to send you a copy. Uh, your okay. your email. Your your uh, physical address. Okay, know. that's awesome. You you bring a lot of energy. To the conversation and i love your your um you a lot of positivity i can feel it and that helps right it, it helps some people are negative i call them debbie downers who are into we're into the negative right you just need to be focusing on what's good out of a you know takeaway so yeah i'm happy jeans that's, me, so. that's good i like that um for the listeners what is um one takeaway you want them to leave with from this conversation. What do you think? You know, I mean, believe it or not, it's a historical fiction, but it's a lot of the issues in that book is relevant to people. Uh, people have empathized with my characters. There are lots of strong women, uh, but strong women weren't born yesterday. Iranian women. Um, and, and many other women from the old world, including your mom, they're extremely strong. Yes. Uh, yeah, they stand for their own right to, sometimes they can't stand for their own rights because society doesn't allow them, but they stand for their children's rights. And okay. that's important. Uh, so read the box and Swiss bars and enjoy it. And maybe you learn something about it. Maybe not. It doesn't matter. You know, take it to the right. beach. It's awesome. I love this. I really appreciate sure. Ephraim, sure. you taking your time. And um, for those that are listening, where can they find more stuff about you? Uh, they can go uh, to my website. So that's afarin.net. Very easy. www.afarin.net. They can go to LinkedIn. I have a nice profile there. Um, they can uh, also look at the books a website. Book has its own website. It's called uh, silencewhispers.com and uh, it also has its own uh, gmail uh, uh so it's called silencewhispersbook at gmail.com okay. so they can write to me in that mail address i respond to every one of them and that uh, hopefully you know every one of them would start a nice conversation that's cool and for those that are listening, I'll include the links in the description. This has been a beautiful conversation. I'm all excited. <laughs> I like you just, like I said, I'm getting some great energy vibes from you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the book is available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles and the book 
I think bookshop.org, which has a lot of uh, independent bookstores. Yes, that's the independent stuff. That, yeah, I, I believe in supporting those independent stores, if you think. Yes, yes, and, you know, it's all. It's, it's, believe it or not, it is a far flight, uh, unfortunately, but it's, yeah. uh, but people love it and do it and you want to stay. Yeah, stay with your passion. I think yeah. that's going to keep moving yes. forward with that. Yes. And, and thank you so much, Afron, and thank you for helping and, and, and inspiring women. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening, guys.